The 76ers of the late 70s were a star-studded team that seemed to have trouble meshing as a unit. I would say more than half of that team wanted to be the star, or thought that they were the star. Uh, the egos were scary, and you can't win that way. After a disappointing loss in the 77 Finals, the Sixers began to search for a floor leader that could bring the team together. It would lead them to West Texas State University, which had embarked on a search of its own several years earlier. My assistant watched some, uh, a lot of Chicago public high school games, and uh, one of the top players was a guy by the name of William Dice. Uh, we asked him to visit, but he would not visit uh, or said he wouldn't unless he brought along his friend, which we didn't know anything about. His friend happened to be Maurice. Cheeks blossomed at West Texas State, earning all conference honors three years in a row. After being selected by Philadelphia in the second round of the 78 draft, many wondered how his quiet demeanor would blend in with the team's boisterous personalities. I remember most Maurice Cheeks first came into the league. Matter of fact, I let him stay at my house a few times. Maurice Cheeks had a Afro so big you couldn't get it all in the picture. And Henry Bibby used to tease him all the time because he didn't have a jump shot. I came to camp and I was actually waiting on someone to tell me I was cut because we just had a lot of big name guys at the time and I just never really thought I had a chance. Not only did Cheeks make the team, he was named the starting point guard. And his team-oriented style soon began to rub off on the Sixers, transforming the team into a more unselfish unit. Great pass to Cheeks. Once we got Maurice Cheeks, that was uh, an absolute freedom you know, for me because he looked to pass first rather than shoot first. Here's a two-on-two -two break. Cheeks, Julius, and Cheeks created it all. He made his decisions before guys were open. The ball was already in the air before the guy came off the pick, so when he was open, the ball got into his hands before the defensive man had time to recover. And very few ball players have that knack. Bring it down into the corner. Force the defense to do something. Well, every coach needs a, an extension on the floor, and Mo was exactly that for Billy Cunningham. He was intuitive about the game. He had a, a real high level of understanding. I remember as a young reporter telling my son, if you want to learn the game, watch Maurice Cheeks. You can enjoy Dr. J. You can't do what he does. You can learn to do the things that Maurice does. You can learn to do the basics. Oh, in time. What a beautiful pass by Mo Cheeks. With Cheeks in charge, the Sixers returned to the NBA Finals three times in four years in the early 80s. And in 1983, they steamrolled through the playoffs with a 12-1 record, culminating with their crowning achievement, a four-game sweep of the Lakers. The Philadelphia 76ers, Maurice Cheeks, quiet, no, they're going to be the one. Yeah. folks. We had a great team. I mean, Moses, Doc, Andrew, Tony, Bobby Jones. We had a great nucleus for winning that championship. What I thought was intriguing for all the leadership qualities he possessed, he was silent about it. Uh, he, he was not a rah-rah guy. Uh, he was all about getting everybody involved in the offense and then biting you at the right time. And there's a steal by Cheek. Cheeks didn't just orchestrate the Sixers' offense, he was crafty and calculating on defense as well, making the NBA's all-defensive team four times. Terry doing what he does best, picking someone's pocket. My rookie year, I remember the first time I played against Morris, and I remember watching him, I used to say, oh, he's not that great of a defensive player. And the first two quarters, it seemed like he was almost letting me bring the ball up, but he was getting closer and he was intensifying the pressure each quarter. Then by the third quarter, he was everywhere I was at, he was at. In the fourth quarter, I thought he was inside of me. And a steal by Cheeks. Don't keep your eye away from Maurice Cheeks. That's the moral. At the crunch time of the game, he always seemed to be able to come up with the definitive defensive play to turn the game. He almost came to expect it uh, on a nightly basis. Intercepted by Cheeks. Jaminski back. Cheeks dunks it. But after consistently being title contenders, the Sixers began to fade in the late 80s, falling victim to age and injuries. 
one by one their stars departed, and in 1989 it was Mo's turn as he was traded to San Antonio. It was pretty much a shock. I, you know, it's something. Nah, it's just, it's just like bad news, man. You know, I don't. <laughs> But as a consummate professional, he set aside his disappointment and devoted himself to being a mentor to younger players. I can remember him coming to the Nets uh, to sort of advise others, and, and that's the respect I think everybody in the league had for him. As a coach, Maurice has tried to instill some of the values he displayed in his career as a 76er. I knew the game, and I knew I could teach part of the game to other people and other players, and that's what I wanted to do. 